Hello everyone, Drifty here from Driftwood Gaming and in this RPG Maker MV tutorial I'm going to show you a couple of ways that you can use lighting in your game. <clears throat> so the first method is going to be drawing a picture on the screen and having that picture map, uh, follow the player's map X and map Y using a parallel process event. And this is a, a useful technique if you want to have like a scene where the player's not really moving um, and you want to just have it like you're looking through a hole or a periscope or something. Uh, at some move event that's going on in the background uh, you could do that there are some flaws with this method as you can see like there's stuff in this corner that we can't access so when you're using this method you want to make sure that you're you have the player uh, blocked off around like the last uh, I would say eight tiles of the game so that the care can't character can't go past like this far you know so that they don't get uh, blinded or, or they're not uh, they don't have blind spots when they're moving around so uh, only thing you'd have to do to accomplish this is just make it so that there's like a wall around all of your maps that you're using the draw event. Let me show you how to create this real quick and then I'll show you the, the plugin, the Terax Lighting plugin. So the second one uh, requires a plugin, but I'll show you how to do that. So what you want to do for um, this event, you want to control two variables. You're going to right click, insert new, and then you're going to control variables, and then you're going to set this to game data. And the game data that you're going to specify is uh, character player map X for the first variable and then character player map Y for the second variable. Once you have your two variables set up, you're going to show picture by inserting new, going to tab two at the bottom, you see show picture. This is going to pop up and then this will show you all the, pic all the pictures that are in your IMG pictures folder. So you can create uh, your own pictures <coughs> excuse me, in paint or even like... Uh, uh, Photoshop or GIMP or any uh, image, editing software, image editing software that you prefer. So for this picture, we're going to call on the shadows one. Oops, edit this. And the, the number I've, I've sel uh, selected is up to you. It doesn't really matter. You can cho choose one, uh, origin, upper left. But we're going to designate uh, the location of this picture with variables. So right now we're setting X to the player X's map position. We're setting Y to the map Y. Uh, we're scaling this up by 200% because what you want to do with this picture is uh, cut it in half. <clears throat> cut it in half. Like if you're using 7, uh, 1280 by 720 resolution, you want to use 640 by 360 uh, size of a picture. That way, you're using less system resources when you're drawing that picture. You can just scale that picture up. So uh, you may notice that the height is 10% more than the width. Why is that? Even though the picture is scaled correctly, because for some reason at the top of the screen you see like a, a little bar where the picture doesn't cover so I'm uh, to get around this I've used two methods the first method is increasing the height uh, so that it's a little bit bigger but I still saw a little tiny line that it looked kind of funky when you're playing it in game so to get around that you're gonna do a move picture event Oops. right click edit this one a move picture is right on the same location as show picture and tab 2 and this one, you're going to select the picture that you've already showed. You're going to set uh, the same origin. You're going to keep the same scale and the same opacity. <clears throat> but you're going to change one thing. You're going to designate the position of the, the picture by negative 20 on the Y. This will push the picture up 20 frames and uh, cover up that little beam at the top that where the picture wasn't covering. So you set this to one frame and not waiting for completion. And then uh, it'll, it'll work just like it did in the that little quick uh, playthrough. Now looking at the second way of doing lighting and the better way in my opinion you're gonna use a plugin called Terex Lighting and uh, this is uh, a really cool little program and it's not even hard to use at all. This will be 250 by default I recommend you take it up to like 300 or 400 uh, unless you want it to be really claustrophobic. Um, reset lightings I just keep that default on no. The help file isn't too big but really the only thing you need to really pay attention to is this first little thing right here It'll say light 250 and then a color note tag. And it's using, uh, I think, hexadecimal. So we're using uh, six uh, letters and numbers. It goes from zero to, to one, or zero to nine, and then every letter after that in caps. So A to F, actually. Not every letter, but A to, A to F. And that'll let you specify different pictures. And I'm sure you can look online to figure out the, the color. And if you go to your image editing software, it'll even tell you the the the, de the hex uh, sorry the hex number that for that associates to that color. But um, it's kind of fun to even if you don't know how to to 
just create your own colors by changing like the F to a seven and the other F to a zero and, and create different colors. But let me get into uh, uh, this other one. I'll show it to you super quickly. Set our player's position here. Show you what it, it looks like in game and then I'll go over it. So you can see the lighting here is uh, really cool. We have a, a, a light following the player. We also have a light at, right here. But um, let me show you how you would do that. Basically, this is our that's our move event. Here's where I have the light, and all you have to do to set this up is create a new event. Uh, it doesn't have to even uh, have anything in it. Only thing you have to do is put something in the note tag. So we're going to do light space 250 space whatever color you want that light to be. Uh, and then once this is on, it'll darken the screen except for where the lights are at. So where you put this is going to specify where the light's at. So if I were to put this over here and play it, you would see that the, the light is no longer coming from outside, but it's coming from a spot where the event's at. So you can see that it's dark right here uh, where the door is. Or the the cave entrances, but it's all. But now it's light. It's lighting, lighting, lightening up right here. Also, the players got um, a radius around the player, and you can specify the radius in the plugin, like I showed you before. Uh, Terex lighting uh, right here. You can specify this. See, if I were to take this to let's ma manipulate these numbers. Let's turn this default to 50. We'll move this back to the, the entrance. And I'll show you what this will look like if we have a super tiny light radius around the player. So we can't really see where we're going. Oh, actually triggered an event there. This is the beginning of uh, one of my games. But, but you can see we have like the candles. You can make uh, pictures that, uh, or I'm sorry, events that have graphics that also generate light. So you can see the tiny little 50 radius light around the player. Uh, that seems to... Uh, way too dark so we'll go ahead and, and change that back but you can uh, manipulate these numbers you can even change them uh, change them throughout uh, 300 I actually like 400 better go to 400 but yeah so here's the event this one is uh, just creating a 250 and I like using 200 to 250 for the doors and like around the entrances to the cave and then for uh, that other one that you were looking at these uh, torches, I set them to 500, and that seems like they're pretty bright. I might even take them down a little bit, 450. <clears throat> of course, I would have to go and change all of these now, and I'll do that later. But basically, that's it for this tutorial. Thank you guys for watching. Um, I'm going to put a link in the description below to where you can get Terax lighting. Hopefully, this uh, helped you guys improve your caves and your creepy dark areas of the game. Uh, continue to like, favorite, share, subscribe. If you like this sort of content, put your questions in the comments below, and I'll try to make videos for you. And uh, if I can't figure, if I don't know how to do it, I'll try to figure it out for you guys. But thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next tutorial.